Ableton Moto offers the finest suspension components for your street or track bike. Able to fit nearly any budget, contact them today for a personalized recommendation of what products will fit your needs. From DIY kit parts to complete drop-in solutions, they can absolutely transform your bike and take it to the next level of suspension performance. Hey guys, I am really excited for this video because it's going to complete my suspension upgrade project on the FZ09 here. You saw me do the fronts, I used the Stoltec kit for revalving, and oh my god, it fixed the front forks. That, in comparison to doing the rear, was 10 times as hard. This is really a simple upgrade. If you've never done it, this is going to show you everything you need to do. Now, I want to try to make this as inclusive and easy as possible whether or not you're doing what i'm doing putting in a pre-made assembly that's a direct swap for the stock shop or if you're going the ultra budget route and getting a, this is actually a good option if you were not looking to spend a lot of money but still get a decent bump up in performance you can get a used shock assembly from a few different models that are almost a direct fit for the FC09 or MT09. Uh, certain models of Hayabusa and Kawasaki ZX series, for example, almost fit right in. Depending on what combination you're doing, you have to do a little bit of easy modification to either the shock or the bike. What I encourage you to do if you're interested in that option is Google for that specific combination. And there are more than a few fairly detailed instructions out there on whatever you need to do to get that combo working. But this video is gonna be about a direct swap for any of the higher end solutions, whether it be the basic Penske or what I'm doing, the double clicker, or a track option like a triple clicker or any other brands that are set up already for this particular application. Now, quick note, exactly how you do this procedure is gonna depend on what configuration your current bike is in, what kind of tools you have and what kind of space you're doing this in. There are a ton of different ways to do this swap. There's probably a ton of ways I haven't even heard about. Maybe you do it completely differently. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it just for my circumstances, but I'll touch on some other options for you and why you may or may not want to do those along the way. So let's get started. Quick note, the service manual is the one most invaluable tool you can have no matter what bike you have but it's not always the best advice. For example, if you see a 35 foot pound torque spec on an oil drain bolt, don't do it. In the case of replacing this shock, they want you to basically dismantle half the bike, replace oil seals, all kinds of nonsense over a couple hours. You don't need to do any of that. So here's the gist of what we're doing. What we have to do is spread the suspension. We need the swing arm and the shock to fully extend. That'll give us the clearance to get to the mounting bolts and get the shock out. Now obviously raising it up by the rear wheel doesn't accomplish that because it raises the whole bike but it keeps the suspension compressed slightly. So there are many different ways, like I said, we can raise the bike. One is if you have a completely stock bike, you've got the old brick exhaust system and that is great for that nice big flat spot right there. You put a floor jack under it and you raise the bike. Bob's your uncle. I have, like many people, an aftermarket exhaust which removes all of that and there is no great flat spot under the bike. There's stuff to work with though. You can choose to put floor jacks underneath your pegs. Some people will flip the pegs upside down if you've already replaced them, you've already had them drilled out, so that's fairly easy to do. And you can put your jacks on this rubber part. There's enough room here just to go right under the clevis. You could do that. You can suspend the bike. If you've got one of the big hoists that I made in my video for my FJR, you could suspend the back end. Other people choose to use an automotive scissor type jack 
and either put a plank of wood or something else protective underneath here and simply spread the jack from the top of the tire to here and just kind of spread the bike that way. Be careful if you do that. Obviously, you don't want any kind of damage. If you have hard cases or a at least hard mount for cases on your bike, some people use that as a platform for raising it that way. Lots and lots of different ways to do it. But step one is getting the bike up on a stable platform. I'm going to use my rear stand. Now in my case, I'm using the Yoshi R77 exhaust, and you can see it goes just to the side of the oil pan, and it's still completely cleared. So I've got that bottom part of the oil pan nice and flat to jack up against. Other exhaust systems, however, are not so lucky. Yours may have a pipe covering part of that, and you may have to, if you want to do this method, temporarily remove your exhaust, or at least part of it. Now the only point to jacking up the bike or spreading the suspension is to relieve pressure on the mount bolts that are going through either end of the shock. If there's pressure on it, either way, on the suspension, there's so much tension the bolt won't slide out. This is a very, very tiny adjustment we're doing. We're just getting it to the neutral point so that there's no tension on it and we can get the bolt out. Do not think that we are dramatically doing anything here. And when you do jack it up or raise it up, seriously, it's just a matter of millimeters. And as always, I've got my trusty textbook, which I use for jacking protection and propping things up. It's very nice and sturdy and will never harm a finish. So our mount bolts come in from the left-hand side of the bike. There are nuts and washers on the right-hand side. So first thing to do is the top mounting bolt. Use a 14 mil socket and extension. We'll get the nut and washer off and then just use a little punch to drive the bolt through. That'll allow the shock to move so that we can get clearance to do the rear. Got the nut and the washer. Now I just jacked it up ever so slightly just to take some pressure off this mount point. And now our shock is free on the top. Now past this point you need to be very careful because now your bike is being supported by however you're jacking up the bike. Now in my case this bottom bolt was so tight, well still is, there's no way that you're getting it off with a wrench. There's just not enough bite, not enough leverage. Seriously, it's on there super tight from the factory. So as you can see, I've got perfect clearance now to use a socket, and I did that simply by, now that the top is disconnected, dropping the suspension, dropping the jack, actually compressing what was the suspension. But when you do that, because I have the off-center jack point, it wants to tip. So I just put a jack stand and a cloth under the right peg here and it's just leaning on that so it's a tripod between the front wheel the jack and the jack stand right now and now i can get in there with a 14 mil socket and zip that nut off just like the top super easy i'm just putting a little electrical tape around a 17 mil wrench here and this is going to be a stop for the bolt on the other side it's just going to rest up against the swing arm and prevent the bolt from spinning this is just for protection for my paint up and the washer. Gently tap the bolt through. There's no tension on it so all you need to do is slide it through and there's also a washer on the other side. Okay now we need to jack it up and we're gonna go all the way up as possible so it's still stable. It'll start to teeter on the rear stand when you reach that point and then I'll extend the jack stand and we'll just get it stable there. And this will give us clearance to slide the shock assembly out. And now we just gently 
guide the shock assembly out. If you are concerned about scuffing up your mud guard, you can go ahead and take it off. It's just three bolts and some clips here if you want to do that, but we should have plenty of room. There we go, simple as that. So taking a look here at stock versus the Penske, and this is true of most aftermarkets, at least those on the upper end of the spectrum, you are gonna have some stark differences. Number one, the stock unit, which is obviously here on the right, is non-rebuildable. It is a throwaway piece. If you wanna change the oil, if you need to change your internal valving, and in some cases, I'm not sure about the FC09, you can't even change the spring rate. But with an aftermarket such as this Penske, it is 100% customizable. Now, a benefit of ordering through Stoltec is they are right down the street from Penske. It's very quick. A lot of times you go through a shop and it can take a month or more to get your shock in because they have to order it sometimes from overseas. These are not things that are stock. They're built to order. So you tell them what kind of riding you do, what kind of weight you need it set up for, what kind of roads, are you, blah, blah, blah. Everything is set out of the box, ready to go. So he set the ride height. Obviously it's the same as stock. The spring is customized for my needs. Spring color is the only thing, and I know on the screen it looks a little orange and that's just because of my camera settings. It's actually a very bright red that very well matches the bike red, which I know looks a little orange right there too. It's just the lighting. <laughs> but it is a beautiful red. It's an e-box spring, but exactly what you get is going to depend on your needs. The different manufacturers go of springs go with different colors depending on the spring rates and the actual brand of the spring. So Stoltec offers a very dark blue. It really looks black to me. I thought it was black. I would have been very happy with that one also, but I just happened to get the red, which of course I'm even more happy with. So the other benefit is it's completely rebuildable, meaning if you want to change your oil, oil is a wear item. It does break down over time. And what you get is a difference in how it performs cold versus hot. So after say 20,000 miles, you go out for the first 10 miles of a ride and it's gonna feel nice. And then 20 miles down the road more as the oil is heating up from being used and compressed, it gets thinner and it's not controlling your damping as well as it should. So you change the oil and that gets you back to the best rate for both cold and hot. All you have to do is get a $10 bottle of oil and you can change your oil, just like doing forks. Stock, you just throw it out and you buy a new one. <laughs> Stock only gives you a limited range here of uh, rebound damping. You have both rebound damping control and compression damping control on this. This is the double clicker, which means two adjustments, rebound and compression. They do have a triple clicker, which splits the compression into a high and low. Street use, one control is more than enough, but we don't even have that on the shock here on the stock assembly. You also get a lot more oil, period. You have a bigger tube and an outboard reservoir. It's nitrogen charged. If you need to recharge this one, Yep, you guessed it. You throw it out and buy a new one. Here, you've got a valve. You just refill it with nitrogen. Bada bing, bada boom. The valving is completely changeable, just like the forks. Stocker, nope. All sealed. Can't do anything. So, much more versatile, much more useful, and of course, a much better ride. So let's go ahead and throw it in. Oh, and just a quick note, hang on to your stock shock assembly don't throw that out if you end up trading the bike in you're going to want to put that back in because they will not give you a dime more for this and you can resell because it is fully re rebuildable and customizable you can resell this assembly for a good chunk of what you paid for it new if you take it off the bike when you're done with it so now we need to fish in the new shock assembly into the bike itself the reservoir is going to go right here and i'll show you another part that i bought from a third party that mounts this to the bike very well. There's also a washer zip tied here to the shock. I'm reusing the stock washer. Don't use both of them. And while you're putting it up in place, don't lose the two spacer collars here up at the top. So 
So because we have this reservoir here, what it's doing is preventing the shock from being able to slide forward quite enough that we're able to raise the suspension or raise the swing arm enough to get the bolt in here like we took it off. So what we have to do is attach it to the top bolt first and then what we're going to do is go the opposite way. The swing arm is hollow on the inside and we can then go the other way and insert the bolt from the inside, the underneath of the swing arm instead of over top. So what I did is lined it up and then just inserted my punch there just to hold it in place. I've got the bolt on the other side just hanging in there and now I can tap that from the other side through the shock. Get this out of the way and then we'll put on the washer and nut. So here's my trick for easily getting the nut back on. Take a little piece of electrical tape and just make a little U, kind of make a spring, and then the nut will sit flush here on the end so you can put it in and easily start it by hand. The tension on the shock itself is more than enough to get it really good and hand snug. We'll get a final torque on it when we actually set it back down on the ground. Now what we have to do is ever so slightly just play with the jack to get the holes lined up precisely and then we can take our bolt it'll be easier doing it from the other side slide it underneath here it's hollow and we can put it through so now i'm going to finagle it into place and now we can put our washer and nut on here now we can take it off the jack stand and completely get it off the jack and put it back on the rear stand and that'll put tension on the shock and we can torque these down Torque spec on both these are near 40, so get them really good and hand tight. If you've got a little stubby ratcheting wrench, that will make quick work of doing this nut here. I've got the taped up 17 mil wrench on the other side just to keep it locked in place. And now we're gonna go ahead and torque this as tight as we can. Of course, my hand's gonna cover the shot, but you know what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Now, this is the only part of the kit that I don't like. To actually mount the reservoir to the bike here, this is what Penske gives you, a freaking ugly band clamp. I mean, that that's ghetto. I don't care what you say. For $1,000 plus, I want something better than this. Well, I found something better than that. For 40 bucks, a member of FZ09.org sells these that he makes on eBay, and they are custom mounts just for the Penske to the FZ09. And of course, that looks stock. And it'll look even better when I dab that nut or bolt with a little bit of black paint after I get it on there. Now, if you like me and you don't like branding, you can take this sticker off, uh, the Penske one there, that doesn't really show, that's fine. I'm, I'm not one for brands and logos and stuff. The Yamaha here, this is about all I like on my bike. Total personal taste, but this does come off easily if you wanna take that off. And there we go. That looks awesome. The only thing else I could ask for is if this was black from Penske, but that's okay. You really don't see it from the side. It looks stuck, that looks awesome. Okay, now I need to set the sag they gave me a range of 38 to 42, so I'm gonna get it in that range. What we have is our preload adjuster ring right here. There's a set screw, make sure that you at least tighten that up if you're not gonna play around with it, it comes loose. And we just spin this, and it's not a bearing, it's super easy compared to the stock. It doesn't require any special tool, but they do give us a tool for doing this. In the box, we get a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of stickers. This is pretty cool. It's a full maintenance decal with all the torque specs that you need for doing all the common stuff. More stickers. This is another part that I'll be installing later in another video. T-shirt. And this is the easy preload tool. He gives you a full technical manual. And this has all the info about the shock, how to rebuild it, how to tune it, everything all the way up through racing stuff. I mean, way over what I'll be doing with it, but it's really cool to have. They give you a custom dyno readout of your specific shock assembly. Very cool to have. All right, now I'm gonna set sag and we'll go for a test ride. 
Okay, so out of the box, it was nine millimeters off from 40 millimeters rider sag. So now I'm gonna back off some of the preload. Before I do that, I'm going to remove the set screw. That way I can put it back into a place I can actually reach it wherever I end up on that preload. And because Penske is an American company, we're talking SAE tools and it takes a 764. And they do give you a couple extra set screws in the bag in case you lose them. I'm just gonna total guess here. I don't know how many turns is going to equate to any particular sag adjustment. So I'm gonna go a half turn and just see what happens. One thing that's really cool about this Penske is there's actually a roller bearing on the bottom of the spring between the collar. It takes no effort to turn this whatsoever. It just falls into place. All right, so let's test again. So that only made a three mil difference. We'll keep turning. So that nails it right at 40 millimeters. That was about two full turns. I don't know where it's gonna come out of the box for you. Definitely check it and set it into place. Now, of course, I don't have my helmet or jacket on. That is gonna make a small difference. I wanted it to be closer to the 42 spec anyway. I'm right in the range. You got a nice big cushion of good enough. You're not gonna feel that kind of difference on the street anyway. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our set screw. You'll find certain holes are threaded. Just look around. I've got one that's pretty convenient right here near the top now. Now it's time for a test ride. All right, I've got about 20 minutes on it. Warmed it all up. Got some miles under. I'm gonna hit all the roads that I'm used to. So far, it is absolutely perfect. Can't describe it any better than that. It is absolutely planted. It's performing exactly like I expected, and it's doing a few things I didn't expect. Now, if you watched my fork upgrade video, you know that that absolutely made a huge transformation for the bike. And what that left was a very spongy, pogoey, bouncy rear end that really only manifested after fixing the front because then it really exacerbated how bad the back was. So <laughs> it's all fixed, period. This thing is just gliding down the road. It is like I'm flying on a machine now rather than riding a little motorcycle. It really does make a huge difference. The overall feel of the bike is exactly the same because I happen to have pretty much exactly the same rider sag set on my stock setup. So the ride height didn't change. I have no change from <laughs> There's uh, something new there. <laughs> you, I don't know if it picked it up or not. But anyway, what I was saying is there's no change to the seat height or anything like that. It's, it's what I happened to have it set for before. Now I will note very quickly that Stoltec does recommend that you set your sag according to the race tech method, which is basically pulling up on the bike, taking your measurement, pushing down on the bike, taking your measurement, and that takes into account the stiction, which is basically a few millimeters of where the friction internal to the shock assembly makes a difference. I use the method that Dave Moss shows. Basically, I get on the bike, I do a little settling bounce, and then I take my, me my measurement there. The difference between the two is absolutely minimal. In my opinion, either one is gonna get you the results you need. The only thing you wanna do is make sure you're consistent. Whichever way you do it, do it the same for the front and the rear. So, here's that corner with the dip in it. Now the fork's already cleaned, <laughs> nothing. The fork's already cleaned up the front end and the rear is just staying absolutely planted. Like it's not even there, it's just floating. Now what I do notice is that I do feel bumps a little bit more 
instead of bouncing over things, it's just a really quick little sharp jolt. I got the same thing out of the Street Triple. So the compression damping is definitely a lot more effective than the stock. I mean, it's not even close. It's night and day different. But this thing is staying so level, doesn't matter what I do. And what I was surprised about was I knew this would happen, but I forgot it would happen. It is a lot easier to wheelie than it was with the stock. This front end pops up. I mean, it was easy before, but it's like scary how effortless it is with this nice shock on there because it, the stock one was just absorbing all of that energy. And now it's just translated right down to the wheel. It caught me by surprise. The first time I did it, I was making a turn <laughs> and I gave it the normal amount of throttle that I have done a million times. And all of a sudden my front wheel was in the air. <laughs> so the forks took care of all the brake dive and this took care of all the acceleration squat. I'm sure you can see how little the headlights are moving as I do these heavy acceleration shifts. Now this road coming up here after I make the next light, it's a lot of, well, it's the roughest section of road around here. Let me put it that way. I mean, it's still not a bad road, but there are a lot of little rough patches in the concrete. And when I did the last test video, the forks were fine, but I was bouncing around constantly from the rear end. So let's see how it does on these little rough pavement bumps coming up. <laughs> Front end came up right there. I mean, that wasn't even half throttle. It's seriously effortless. I can feel it working, but I am just, I don't want to say rock steady. I am moving slightly, but there's no jolting Going over the reflectors there, that's, that's it. You can hear it in my voice, it's nice and steady. Absolutely like just flying a missile. Really does feel exactly like the Street Triple RS. If you've ridden one of those, you know how wonderfully that rides, and I'm a big fan of that bike. But I hate the riding position. I love the riding position of the FZ09. That's the benefit to having a model like this that's inexpensive but made to be modified and customized exactly how you like it. Here I am throwing 1500 bucks, not even, 1400 bucks into the suspension and bam, it's equaling a bike that's several thousand dollars more, at least in ride quality. And that's the other benefit to Stoltec. You know, I reached out to them and I said, hey, you know, what sets you guys apart from the industry? Because frankly, there are a ton of suspension shops and dealers and online places that can order you suspension parts. That's nothing unusual. You have the major manufacturers and then you have distributors. But what sets them apart is they don't just order any part. They don't sell to everybody. What they do is they specialize in certain models that they know extremely well, that they personally ride they personally race, and what the heck is going on here? Ah, oh, freaking rubberneckers. We get like five cars through because everyone's like, oh, I've never seen an accident before. What's going on? Which way do we go? Which way do we go? A uh, head to head crash? I couldn't even see it. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying, what sets them apart? It is not only their level of service, but the quality of the product you get. Sure, it's a Penske shock, and you can get a Penske shock from lots of different people. But not lots of different people are going to be able to say, hey, I've set it up with the perfect internal valving. Your damping is going to be spot on. Sure, you might get the ride height adjusted. That's just a spec bike to bike. But look at this. Out of the box, this thing is flawless. Absolutely perfect. They've got the expertise with the specific models of bikes that they service and the products that they sell for them. It's not just ordering a catalog part. So I really appreciate that. 
And thank you very much, Soltec, if you're watching this, for doing an excellent job and providing excellent service. I am extremely happy with my new suspension setup. So there you go, guys. Hope this helps somebody if you're looking for any kind of suspension upgrade. This should at least uh, show you what you need to do. See you next time.